Hello everybody, Ben the Pat Tester here. Welcome back to my channel, K2 and Pat Testing. I'm going to do a video today about laptop chargers. Um, I'll talk about phone chargers as well, but laptop chargers such as this. This is for like a, a, a Lenovo laptop, one of mine. Just a, a block that you plug in there. Um, and then this is another type of charger here. So there's two parts to this charger. Comes with uh, like a clover leaf type cable there. And it plugs into this block here. Now there's quite a bit of um, confusion, varying points of view, varying opinions online about these types of charger and how to pat test them, what sort of pat test to do on them, what pat test not to do on them. It, 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 is a, it is tricky. There's lots of videos on YouTube and various places and talks on forums and things like that about how to pat test these things. So I just wanted to do a video about my opinion, just chatting to a few people that I know, talking on a few Facebook groups and a couple of experts as well, just to try and give a bit more of a definitive answer if there is such a thing about these. But maybe just some help to you guys and then you know we can ask some questions in the comments and things like that so as i've said there's the two types of charger um if we also just refer to this now this is the um in-service inspection and testing of electrical equipment uh from the iet and this is the fifth edition so the latest edition and if we go to the page that talks about this type of equipment it's it's um information communication and technology equipment uh, and there was a new class introduced in, in this um, fifth edition, which is class two FE or functional earth. Um, so this classification was introduced um, to kind of distinguish products that are considered um, to be class two, but they need an earth connection for functionality. So if we go to our charger here, traditional charger here, you can see it's got the three pins, line, neutral, earth. So even though this would be classed as a class two appliance, and I'll come on to that in a minute as well, because uh, there's a couple of confusing bits that might throw you. But if you see here that it would be plugged in via this cloverleaf cable. So this cloverleaf cable would go through the normal IEC check that you, that you would do through a three core cable. So earth continuity, insulation resistance and polarity. Um, we'd, we're assuming that you'll do the, um, the visual check, the fuse, the pins, the cable, all of that sort of thing. So we, we'll put that to one side and we'll assume that we've done that. But then on these, you see that they've got a functional earth in there. And that basically means that the the parts inside need an earth. Um, and it's basically to kind of reduce interference and um, drain away small currents from the filters inside. So it needs that earth to be able to function properly. But it it's not classed as a class one appliance. So the earth is there... Um, rather than for fault protection, it's there for for functionality, and that's why it's called functional earth. Now, in, in the code of practice, you'll see as well at the bottom there, it's quite important. When testing and inspecting such products, they should be treated as class two. So the code of practice says these are class two, but if you see on the back, there's no class two symbol. So that's where things can get a bit confusing because I was always taught if it doesn't have a class two symbol, you treat it as class one. But either way, if you treat it as a class two appliance, there's no external metal parts. So then you can't do any functional checks through your pat testing machine. The only check you can do is a visual check. Now, where the confusion lies is some people would say, right, well, OK, it's, it's got a exposed metal part at the end, um, the DC jack uh, that you plug into your laptop. Now, I've spoken to a couple of people about this, uh, a couple of experts, a couple of uh, people that helped put this code of practice together. And it, it was agreed, it was kind of mentioned in, in various forums and, and meetings and things like that, that... There is no real checks that you can do on on that. that you know, there's no point um, putting your test probe on there while while doing a test and then plugging 
um, a lead in, into there. Um, and it picks up on that in the code of practice. Um, it says here, uh, where does it say? Because of this design, um, and the design being that some of these supply circuits in the charger have capacitors and filters and things like that, um, such equipment may not technically fulfill the requirements of class two, so cannot be classed as a class two, despite having supplementary or reinforced in insulation for protection against electric shock. So basically these chargers, um, they have various components inside which give extra protection against failure. So the risk of severe shock is reduced by design. So basically what they're saying there is that even if something did go wrong inside, um, the, the chances of any um, AC current going down the cable uh, and then there's a risk of you might get in a shock, that has been taken care of with the design of the charger. Um, so that's, you know, there is still a chance of a small shock, but a severe shock has been reduced by design. Uh, <clears throat> so when I'm doing these, I would just treat these as a visual check. Um, you do one check with the cloverleaf cable, and log one visual check with these. Now, whether you charge your customer for that, um, that's down to you and, and what you want to do as, as a business. But you could either treat these as, you know, they are two separate items, but whether you charge for two separate items is, is a different matter. And then with these here, as you can see, this particular laptop charger, well, it's got a plastic earth pin there. Um, you treat it as a class two. Again, no exposed metal parts. It doesn't have that functional earth. So this is a slightly different design. Um, but again, you would treat it as a class two um, appliance. I would again do a visual check on this, check there's no signs of heat damage, check that the plastic pin is actually intact. Some of these may have a metal pin, so it may have a functional earth facility on it, but then you would treat it the same as one of these. They're, they're both the same, just a, a different design. Um, you check for any signs of heat damage, you would check any damage to the cable here or the, this collar here, um, check there's no damage to the pin there. And again, I would just log it as a visual check. The, the frequency of the check would be you know, for you to advise the duty holder or for the duty holder to decide how often um, they would want them done. Typically, maybe a visual check every year, maybe. And if you're not charging for those visual checks, um, yeah, then it, it, there's no detrimental effect to your customer. You're just providing a service just to check. Again, there's no heat damage or damage to the cables. So I hope that helps. So that, that's my opinion, um, that they should just have visual checks. You may have a different opinion. I'd be glad to have a look at those in the comments. We can chat from there. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel and also have a look at the other videos I've made as well. If there's any videos that you want to see on particular subjects, please do let me know. Or if you think I've missed anything out, um, let me know as well. But I hope you pick something up from that. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're all in it for the same for the same reason. We just want to keep our customers safe and their equipment safe and well maintained. Um, and we always look for just you know the the right and correct correct way of doing that. So uh, yeah, hope to hear from you in the comments and uh, look out for the next video. Speak to you again soon.